What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I spent a huge amount of time trying Beatrix exclusive 3 in every content in the game and I want to make that video to compare the damage increase thanks to the exclusive 3 on her in comparison with before when she was exclusive 0 and for that we are going to compare the damage I had on the previous video in the Weathering Coast, the Dwarven Ruins and I'm going to show you a great team I found for PvP. But before we talk about everything I have to talk about up to it quickly. I'm gonna have a new code in April. The previous one is not active anymore. You are gonna need to use the code ActorIMR5 instead of ActorIM. And that one is gonna remain active longer than the previous one, between April 1st and April 12th. If you are using my promo code, you are gonna get 5% extra cashback during that period. And apparently in April, we are gonna have a ton of events on Infinite Magic Raid. I don't have more news for now, but this is what up to it told me. And as well, if you want to have some news about up to it when we have the promotion days, you can follow the link I have in the description below to join their official Discord. And then you are going to have the promotion days every month. And apparently between the 14th and the 15th of April, you are going to have an extra code with up to it. But I don't know more about that yet. So two days of extra promotions. So if you are planning to spend during April, don't forget to use my promo code AXRIMO5 and to follow the official Discord of Atsuid to know about the promotion days. Okay, so if you check now at the screen, this is my power of Sega City team and this is the damage I can have when I'm using Jack and Roll. 9 billion damage around that, okay? So then I decided to change the team and to replace Jack and Roll by exclusive zero Beatrix and I was able to reach 6 billion 200. I tried multiple times and the highest damage I was able to reach was 7,300,000,000 using Beatrix Exclusive Zero instead of Jack and Roll. And now this is the result. With Exclusive 3 on her without any echo, this is close to the result I had with Jack and Roll in the team. But Jack and Roll had an echo, so what if I add an echo on her? It's just gonna increase a bit my attack over time. And she's gonna have more effect hit, so she's gonna grant a bit more stats to my team. And this is the result. So then, that was the result with my first direct damage team with the Jingle Bell inside. This is the team I was using and I had 2 billion, 200 million damage, so let's retry. And this is the result with her exclusive 3. Uh, generally, if I retry, I have between 2 billion, 500 and 3 billion damage, so this is way better than yesterday. So then I tried her without Nicolas in the team and I had that score, 2 billion, 400 million. And this is the score I have now. Uh, pay attention because there is a difference. When I have Esther in the team, I have a skill master aura 5 stars. If I don't have her in the team, then I have no skill master aura. I don't have any on my uh, Nicolas. This is why I have a bit better when I replace Nicolas in instead of her. And if I retry again, the damage can vary. I have a bit less that time. But it's still better than before. And then I tried to replace Ben Austin with her and this is the result I had. And with the exclusive zero, it was worse than when I was using Ben Austin without her in the team. Because I was getting a bit more than 3 billion damage. And there we go, this is the result now. Way better. 3 billion 600 million. And if I retry, I can get better than that. Yeah, look at that, this is already better. Almost 4 billion damage. And that time, I have 4 billion 100. So now that team is better than before. And this is the result when I have Ben Austin in the team without Beatrix. In the previous video, I forgot to talk about the HP burning team. So this is the one I am currently using on that bus and this is the damage I can have. 1 billion 850 million. So now if I replace Guhana with the new hero, then this is the score I can get. A bit better. With Beatrix exclusive 0, 169 turns, 2 minutes and 33 seconds and the boss was almost midlife. So now if I retry, I almost one shot the first wave, 16 turns to clear it, 45 turns to reach the boss wave. And with the same number of turns, 169, this is the HP remaining on the boss. And if we check yesterday, with exclusive 0, 170 turns, I was there. So there is a pretty nice damage difference, right? 
But then you are going to ask me, is it better today to pull for her or to wait for the return of Nicolas if you don't have both of them? Nicolas is still better because you have an extra life thanks to Nicolas and he is still upgrading your damage. So Nicolas is better than her. And there we go, the boss is dead. 228 turns. But now I want to do something more, just to see the damage increase comparison between her and Esther. Because I was using Esther in the same team before, and so I want to see if it is faster to beat the boss with Beatrix or Esther. First wave. Look at the efficiency. The wave has been one shot. Second wave cleared in 30 turns. 45 turns only to kill the minions. And look at the damage of Jingle Bell, 110 turns only to kill the boss. 1 minute 53 seconds. Her direct damage and piercing rate increase is insane for Jingle Bell. So now let's try with Esther and compare the time I need and the number of turns. Look at the damage difference. I wasn't able to one-shot the wave, I had to use the first active skill. Okay, but it's faster using Esther, and that's pretty fun because of the cooldown reduction. 25 turns and boss wave already. I have less damage using Esther instead of Beatrix, but the cooldown reduction helps so much to kill enemies faster. Oh, that's bad. Unfortunately, I lost one hero. I lost my Nicolas. But it might still be doable. Okay, I lost Lydia. This is really bad. I won't have the attack buff anymore, so maybe it's gonna be doable, maybe not. Really close. I died and she has been revived and the boss is dead. 120 turns, but same time as before. 1 minute and 54 seconds. So it was really hard because I lost my Nicolas, but globally this is almost the same. Now let's check the Harbour faction. And this is the team. I was able to clear that stage without any limited hero inside, but with her inside, trust me, it's gonna be faster to kill the boss and the waves. So let's run the fight and let's check that. First, she can stun waves. Rista too, but if you are using the same skill on the first wave, this is probably not gonna work on the second one. But now my Donald has way more damage than before. So he is just destroying enemies. And we are gonna check that on the boss wave. Okay, defense down on the boss. I have no shield for the shield smash aura on Donald. And look at the damage. <laughs> he is destroying the boss. Look, that was only the basic attacks. He is destroying the boss. Literally. This is insane. Look at that, look at that, defense down, even my Rista hits really hard on the boss with the ultimate. And there we go, the boss is already dead. So really strong in that content. But don't worry because th that content is doable without any limited hero depending on the stats you have. And now let's have a look to the team I am using in PvP. This is a great team, a really big team, and if you have big stats on heroes, you are gonna destroy everything in front. But pay attention to one thing. This is working versus that team because my Donald has a lot of speed. I nerfed intentionally his attack and crit damage to increase his speed, and so I am sure that no single Jingle Bell in front will have more speed than I. And so she is gonna have the Shackle debuff so I can survive the first turn. Otherwise, it's not doable. If you have a Melchior in front instead of Jingle Bell, probably that speed team is gonna nuke me and destroy me. So this is not an immortal team, but a really strong one. And you are gonna see Imagine. The damage my Donald Rebelly is gonna deal to enemies. He's gonna have Lydia to power up his damage and the huge damage increase from Beatrix. And then he's gonna have some protection thanks to both the Sun Wukong and that guy Nordak. So let's check that. You're gonna see this is gonna be fast. And I'm not even using the first active skill of Lydia to increase by an extra his damage. So I can remove buffs from enemies. 
So I'm taking a lot of damage so far. She wasn't able to use the ultimate. Now I can stun, stun some of them. I have the damage immunity and I have the block buff removal. So they can't remove my buffs. So even if there is an NG3 in front, she won't be able to remove my buffs. And now it's time to hit. And look at that! I just one-shotted everyone with my Donald Rebelly. This is insane, this is absurd. And I don't have big stats on my Donald. I'm gonna show that to you. This is my Donald, 2400 speed, 54k attack, and he has a 324% crit damage. Before, I had a 2100 speed, but I had 370% crit damage. So, I'm currently still working on my Jingle Belt, but in the future, this is gonna be the next one. I have a Shield Smash Aura 0 stars for now, so I can work on that and level 5 only. So, imagine the potential of the hero in the future. He's just gonna destroy absolutely everything. And I had no Echo at all on her, so if I equip that one, it's gonna be a bit more efficient. And now the question is, is she mandatory to beat this kind of team? Absolutely not. Even if you have her exclusive 1, exclusive 2, exclusive 0, even if you don't have her, you are going to be able to beat this kind of team. Every team has a feebleness. You just have to find the right heroes. Look, for example, I'm going to use that team and you are going to see. It's going to do the same. I'm using the zeal. I'm freezing them all. It's increasing the turn meta of my Asindo. She can play before the others. I'm going to silence them. So now they have two controls, but I have only one on Jingle Bell. So if she takes her turn, she's going to be cleansed. And then I'm going to take a lot of damage. So I use Catherine to cleanse my heroes just in case I wasn't able to control Renai. Otherwise, she would have lowered my turn meta and that would have been bad. So I can cleanse. Just in case, I increase the turn meta of Nita, stun enemies, so she won't be able to take her turn because she has two controls on her and Sun Wukong can cleanse only one at once. And now ultimate with Nita and the fight is over. Nobody remains alive. So yes, you have always a team to beat the opponent. But of course, if you have all the limited heroes in one team, if you attack other players in auto using multi-battles, you are going to have more win rate. So you, it's going to be more comfortable for you. So that was all for the video. Let me know what you think about the hero in the comment below. Uh, I think in my case that she is pretty strong. She is going to reinforce some teams, especially in 3v3 and championship 5 versus 5 teams. Uh, because it's going to consolidate other teams. And I think that she has been released mainly for that. But she is still really useful in other contents in the game as well. So, have a nice day guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.